I'm Tanisha Arena, and you're listening to Unapologetic. Happy New Year, y'all. It's been a while, and um, per usual, every time I sit in this chair, there's lots of things to talk about, but I think I want to keep this one short and sweet and to the point uh, as we move into the King holiday. And for those of us in social justice work, it's like, it's like holiday time and busy. Like this is the one, right? And there's going to be all kinds of King quotes and, you know, peaceful this and that. And it's like, okay, what we're not going to do is continue to whitewash history and truth, right? The time of his death, Dr. King was one of the most hated persons in our country, right? But that's not the piece that we want to talk about. But we need to talk about that while all these celebrations are about to pop off because we need to not have any celebration without any voting rights legislation. Because we're sitting at this place in our community right now, in our country, where things are falling apart, like literally, or they're they're apart and we're in denial about that. But here's this quote from Dr. King that I want you to think about, right? Because past is present. I think the tragedy is that we have a Congress with the Senate that has a minority of misguided senators who will use the filibuster to keep the majority of people from even voting. I'm sure this was in 1960 something, but here we are at the beginning of 2022. And this rings very true. There was a vote today and literally our electeds are showing you exactly where they stand and on what side of history that they're gonna be on. The filibuster is a relic of slavery. Make no mistake about that. It is what it is. Let's call a thing a thing so we could change it. And we need voting rights legislation. We don't need the performances and there are lots of performative things going on like putting the late great ancestor Maya Angelou on a quarter, make it make sense. Because on the other side of that coin is George Washington, who owned enslaved people from the time he was 10. And I've been thinking about this, this duality of a coin, one side versus the other. So Maya Angelou, that's who we aspire to be in the United States, right? But then on that Washington side, that's where we fall short. And it's the pieces of humility that are missing under white supremacy and a culture rooted in dominance and superiority. We aspire to be these great things, the performances, but we fall short. And it's in the places that we fall short, that's where we're gonna find that humility and connection and that's where we need to be. And then we can actually get to that place where we'd have a coin that would have Maya Angelou on both sides and not honoring an enslaved, uh, person who owned uh, enslaved people, and then this great ancestor on the back. Because what sense does that make? Just like King Holiday, let's celebrate. I have a dream. I do too. I have a dream that will tell the truth and shame the devil, and we'll actually have real change. Not performative coins, but real change, voting rights legislation, will end police brutality, will end homelessness, we will have universal health care because we are still in the middle of a pandemic. How many people do you know, maybe you yourself have fallen down with COVID? And even the way that we talk about it, oh, it's mild. Mild is relative. That assumes that you're already healthy to begin with. It's ableist. If you don't know what that means, look it up. It's another one of those places where we replicate dominance and superiority. So going into this weekend, yes, think about Dr. King, what his life actually represented as being one of the most hated men at the time of his death. The fact that at 43 years old, I've lived four years longer than him because he was 39. He had a wife, he had kids. So when we talk about legacy and celebration, can it be done in truth? So then we can actually get somewhere and actually actualize a dream instead of just dreaming. <laughs>